Unfortunately, the expectation of business to see a decline in le lending rates may not come to reality, as International Monetary Fund has backed the Bank of Ghana to tighten the monetary policy rate if conditions are not favorable. Hence, the policy rate remains at 16% after the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC of the Bank of Ghana, maintained it for four consecutive times. This comes after it was reduced by 50 basis points in January 2019. This means for businesses, the average lending rate will maintain a high at around 30% as the policy rate has a great influence on determining the cost of credit to businesses. What drives every organization is its human resource human resource. Hence, it is expedient for organizations to ensure their employees' remunerations are significant. I have in the studio with me Fumi Olani. She's a manager, the private client and family wealth group at Anderson Tax to speak on tax efficient structuring for employees. Thank you very much for joining me in the studio for me. Thank you for having me too. Yes, definitely. So uh, let's get right to it. What is the situation around tax efficient structuring for employees? Okay, so this takes me back to when the tax law was um, revised as the Personal Income Tax Act revised um, 14th June 2011. 2011. So it actually sp spells out what becomes reliefs and allowances. So basically some of the allowances and the reliefs that were granted then were revised, like the personal allowance, and then it became the consolidated relief allowance. And then certain okay. reliefs were spelled out. So for example, you have the meal, um, which is the meal allowance allowance which is okay. like giving the um, f you have a slip for canteen use and then you have the national housing fund which is a relief for employees is 2.5 percent of the basic but that's allowance. for homeowners Okay, so the National Housing Fund is actually a relief too. So okay. you can actually grant that based on, um, so there's something about the tax law that gives owner-occupied houses, they give you the relief so you can eventually get it as a relief for in file, when filing your returns. But you know you must file your returns and you must inform the tax authority about those allowances and reliefs before they okay. can grant it in the following year of, the, of tax year. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, how can employees, employers maximize? Um, how can employers minimize the taxes that their employees are exposed to? So, there are basic tax planning opportunities that we actually pref um, prefer to clients. We tell them about how to actually manage the taxes of their employees. For example, it's not. Every company that actually grants this national housing fund, it is mandatory. It is compulsory, but most companies don't grant it. And they don't know what it can benefit for the employees. The eventual, um, it, there are lots of benefits for, it, for employees when they grant such relief. And another relief that you can grant the employees are there are some reimbursable expenses that okay. you, the employees are not uh, entitled, they're not supposed to make a personal benefit from. So those are the kind of reliefs that they can, that's the kind of allowances that are allowable for tax purposes. And then when uh, the company grants meal allowance, meals to employees, so there's a canteen okay. where the grants, uh, where they give meals to employees is actually going to be not taxable for the employees. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of them like that, that the employer can actually take advantage of for the benefit of the employees just to reduce the tax rate on those employees benefits and this looks like a lot of documentation what are the challenges that you see taxpayers having in terms of documentation okay I think a lot of companies ignore the fact that tax um, tax authority can knock on the door at any time to request for documents and to um, carry out audit exercises and even investigation if, if, if it's allowed so basically the companies and allied matters act gives an allowance for six years to keep your documents but okay. some companies would ignore the fact that the tax authority has a limitless um, timeline to request for this document. So we always advocate that companies should keep documents as far back as possible. Bef because even um, in interaction, during the interactions um, that we have with companies, we realize that some tax authorities will request for audits for 20 years backwards. Wow. You know, is, yeah, sometimes you don't keep is your documents. in terms of some form of investigation? Yes. But you know, tax authorities just ignore the fact that investigations can only be carried out when there's a Wilford default when there's a fraud and when there's a neglect on the part of the employees or employers, but they just carry out 
investigation even without being prompted. So basically we tell employers to keep documents tidy and you know there are other, there are other ways of keeping your documents. You can keep them in the cloud, you can have a server that can retain your documents for as long as possible because the tax okay. authority wouldn't listen to excuses about you not having the right documents at the right time. And then finally before we go there's a situation regarding the government always feeling like um, companies are hiding something somehow when they come for audits of yes. this nature. Yes. So I believe that uh, because the government has, um, they, ha they have a mandate to generate as much as possible revenue for the for the state or for the federal government. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they try as much as possible to drain out every possible way of getting <laughs> revenue from you. So the onus is on the company to present the documents as truthful as possible. And then in all fairness to the companies, I think the tax authorities are beginning to um, see the good side of the, of the compliant companies and they give awards to them. But on, this, okay. on the other side, some government authorities still feel that they want to drain um, as much or even much more that they should from employ from employers. So what they do is they, they go scrutinize your books. It, they even go as much as possible to get your immigration returns or get documents from third party, from maybe from the banks and all that. So I think that the government should actually give a trust. Um, they should be trusting on the, on the employers and the companies that are compliant and go for the ones that are not compliant, that are not in the tax net. So for mm -hmm. example, there's op there are opportunities for informal sectors to be taxed. So we believe that government should actually seek other means of generating revenue rather than imposing more taxes on those that are compliant. Thank you so much for, me for joining welcome. me. This is Thank all you. time can permit. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much.